Okay, with Open Tunes, everything you'll do will go through either the X sheet or the schematic. Now, the majority of the work you will do will happen in the X sheet. Open Tunes does not have a timeline. It's not something which bothers me because I personally prefer the X sheet, but unfortunately for people who want a timeline, it isn't there. Um, you can do various things in the X sheet. Um, including certain of the effects will work in the X sheet. So for example if we want to add an effect over here we can go to our effects and if we say checkerboard should work and then we have a checkerboard effect in this column. To see that, as you can see there's nothing in the view, to see that we'd actually go up top here and we would click at the render view. The render view would then render that effect. Um, and would give you a preview of your final scene rather than your draft setup. Then I'm just going to delete that. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to just change the interface a little bit. I'm just going to remove the cleanup settings and then I'm going to add the level strip. So, if you want to maximize any of the views, you can double click at the top here, just so we can maximize the effects so that I can, uh, the X sheet so that I can focus on it. Um, and what we've got is our X sheet going down here, all of our individual columns, and the columns which are on the left will generally be the ones which are at the bottom. There are ways to change this but um, I'm not going to go through that now. Then at the side over here we can scrub through our, our X sheet um, and then we have these little markers over here. There should be one at the top and one at the bottom um, and they are basically markers to show when you will play when you are previewing animation you can play this section only by setting those markers so if you want to focus on a small set of animation you will set those markers then we will first look at the sound column at the top here if we click on that we will activate the ability to be rendered. If that is off then it will not be rendered. Below that we have whether it will be shown on the display. So if I go back here we will now hear sound. If I click on that little box there a key will appear. That actually means that this column is now locked and no changes will take place. And then beneath that in the sound we have a volume slider and if we click on the speaker we will have not. the sound play. So what you are going to have in the X sheets over here are called levels. And levels are not drawings, they are actually collections of multiple drawings. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete a couple of these so we can just have one and now this over here, this entire strip over here is a level. In order to manipulate it you have this colored bar at the side if we click on that we can drag it from column to column and up and down through the timeline. We can also extend the level by dragging this widget at the end. Now if we go here to the definition of that level I can change the name 
if I so choose. In this case, I will change it to make it easier to manipulate. And if I go back here, I can actually type in the name of the level, and it will now bring that level over here on this column. But you will see that the name is in red, and the reason the name is in red is that there is currently no frame specified for this level. So in order to choose a frame, I can just put the frame name number in at the end. I can then extend it and move that around. I can also, at any point on this level, put in a specific frame mentioned in the level, in the level, and it will then show up. Now, there are other ways of manipulating it which are a bit easier than having to type in each frame at a time. So, for example, with my level strip over here, I can select a number of drawings and I can just drag them into the timeline. And you can do this for any sections of the drawings. So, once you've dragged them into the timeline, you can manipulate them in various ways. If we go and right click on it, you will see all of these options over here. So if we choose to, we can change the timing of each of the drawings in the level. Um, those options would also be here under Cell and X Sheet. Now, the thing which is not specifically obvious is actually how to delete components from the timesheet, uh, from the X Sheet. Now, to delete from the X Sheet, what we'll see over here under X Sheet is we have Remove Frame. And unfortunately, this has a problem. As you'll see if I click on it, we have removed frames throughout the entire X sheet for that frame. There are ways around this. So, for example, if I choose to lock those two columns, we can then remove the frames again and they will not be affected. But that is not a specific, um, it's not a very kind of efficient way of working. So what we'll do instead is we'll go over here and we will just cut the frames as if we were copying and pasting. So if we wanted to remove those frames, we would just cut them. Um, so basically edit cut or whichever short key you have, it is one of the few places where you actually have a short key, um, shortcut um, for cutting and pasting. The same will apply if we go over here. If we want to insert drawings into a level, so if we want to have a drawing between 3 and 4, um, what we'd do is we'd go to the level strip, we'd go to number 4 and we'd just insert a drawing between them and then you would have a new number four drawing in the level. Same thing with cutting frames from the level as with the timeline. To cut it is generally the better option. Now now the Two main types of levels which you will use will be your levels which you'll draw with, which will be raster or vector levels. We can specify which kind of levels will be created by default by going over here to Preferences and to Drawing. I will change my file format to PNG, just as a standard, which is and beneath that you can choose whether you have a vector level or a raster level as your standard level of drawing. If you change that, it will now be raster levels as standard. Okay, if I was to draw, it will create a level. If I choose the frame directly beneath that, it will add to that level. 
if I was to click over here on my level strip you will only see that specific drawing. If I was to draw separated from the level it will create another level as you can see this is level A and this is level B. Other ways of creating levels would be over here if I go to new level I can choose a raster or vector level, in this case I'll choose a vector level. You can specify how many frames, so in this case I'll have 10, and you can separate, specify the steps between the frames and you can name the level and then we can generate a level that way. Okay, the final thing which I'm going to go through is to do with animating things with the X sheet. Now, if I draw here, create a level and just extend it, I can animate this drawing. Now, what I'm going to show you over here is, I'll just actually make it a circle, make it a more classic example. Um, what I'm going to show you first and foremost is very poor practice. You really should not do this, and I'll explain why later. But if I want to animate this, if I choose this tool over here, and choose to center it. This will allow me to manipulate the drawing. This will move my pivot to the circle. And if I then go over here and do change the position, I can basically just by moving it and selecting frames create a very basic animation, if I play it with animation, this is very bad practice. Um, and the reason why this is bad practice is you do not want to animate the drawing itself. The reason you don't want to animate the drawing is if you have deformed a drawing through a process like scaling and then edit the drawing and then remove that scaling you will have a deformation on anything which has been modified. Instead of animating the drawing, what we'll do is we'll first make a, another column where we'll make a drawing um, to work with. So if we go over here, just make another circle. Um, and what we will do to animate this instead, I'm not going to go through a lot of this now, I'll try to go through it at another point, is we'll open the schematic and what we'll see is a network describing the scenes. Um, and what we will do is we will click on this button over here to add a peg bar. Now, peg bars allow us to create hierarchies so we can connect peg bars together to create rigs for various drawings and you can use that for cutout animation and you connect all of these nodes by connecting the red and the blue dot. What I will do is I will connect column 2 to the blue dot and then I will use this peg to animate it so I will be animating the peg and not the drawing. So if I go over here you will see that I now have pegs in this selection and if I go and do peg 1, I can set the center of the peg to the where I want it in the drawing again and do the same animation with the peg instead of the drawing itself. 
as I said, I will go try to go through the schematic and making rigs.